Hello everyone. Welcome back to Molly's Flower Shop. Thank you so much for joining me in my kitchen today. Uh, it's December. I can't believe it. I'm sure you can't believe it either that we're already at the end of the year and December of course means holiday for a lot of people. So naturally I wanted to choose something that was kind of holiday themed, not necessarily one holiday over the other, but just kind of that nice warm holiday feeling. Um, and I thought to myself, what kind of uh, special ingredient or produce or what seasonal item can I choose um, to make the December episode something a little bit special? Uh, as you know, I like to kind of focus on some sort of a fruit or vegetable. Um, last month it was pumpkin to kind of highlight the season. And it didn't take me very long to realize that I wanted to focus on the pomegranate. Now, the pomegranate is kind of an intimidating fruit. Uh, a lot of people maybe haven't even tried pomegranate. Um, it's becoming easier to find in your grocery store. Uh, and I love it. It's a winter fruit. It grows this time of year and you can find it at the height of its season at your grocery store this time of year. The reason that a lot of people probably haven't tried it is because you look at the thing and you don't know how to take it apart. Uh, and I've done a few internet searches and they were all these really complicated ways of trying to uh, pick apart a pomegranate. And uh, I've found a very easy foolproof way where you can break down a pomegranate in about a minute and I promise you once you try it the first time you're going to be using it for all sorts of things. So it was the pomegranate that inspired this month's episode and what I wanted to do is create some a very simple recipe that you can make for the holidays and take to a party or maybe has as kind of a centerpiece uh, when you're hosting your friends and family for the holidays. So we'll be doing a bread today and it's going to be a fruit bread not unlike a fruit cake, but not like the traditional, maybe European fruit cakes that you might be accustomed to seeing and not liking very much. So uh, it's kind of like a sexy fruit cake, but in a bread form. Um, and it's going to be pomegranate, like I mentioned, oranges, which are also a winter fruit. And then we'll also be focusing on cranberries, which are very popular this time of year. So an orange pomegranate cranberry bread with an orange icing at the end. And then we're gonna put it on a platter, get a little extra, and dress it up and it'll be a beautiful centerpiece at your holiday party. So let's get started. This is a very simple uh, recipe. It's uh, not unlike a lot of sweet bread recipes. We're going to do our dry ingredients in one uh, bowl. We'll do our wet ingredients in another. We combine the two, give them a mix and pop them in the oven. It couldn't be easier. So let's get started. Let me get my dry ingredients assembled here. Yes, that should be everything. So it's very simple with your dry ingredients. Not a lot of ingredients going on here. We have two cups of uh, pre-sifted all-purpose flour. Nothing special about this. I like to buy the unbleached. I don't like the thought of my food being bleached. So I like to do the unbleached all-purpose, but whatever you have laying around the house is perfectly fine. We have three quarters of a cup of plain white granulated sugar. And then I've combined a few different items in this bowl here. We have one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, one teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of salt, and then to really kind of bring it up into holiday, I've added some warm spices. So we have one teaspoon of cinnamon and a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. And you can play with those spices if you want more or less, or actually not at all. You don't have to put any of these spices in the bread uh, if you don't want to kind of take it into that warm spice. Um, arena, but if you do like those flavors, and I do very much, uh, I do add a teaspoon of the cinnamon and the half teaspoon of the nutmeg. So let's get this all combined in our mixer. You do not need a mixer for this recipe. You can do everything by hand, or if you have an electric mixer, you can do it that way. A lot of times with bread, you don't want to overmix a whole lot anyway, and I'm not going to be doing a whole lot of manipulation to this. You'll see at the end that we really just mix things till they barely come together. When you uh, beat gluten too much or flour too much, it creates these really strong gluten bonds. Um, it's very scientific and it's chemistry and I don't understand everything about it, but I do know that if you mix flour up too much, you create this really strong gluten. And in a bread or a cake, you don't want that really strong gluten bond because that's what makes baked goods kind of tough and dry sometimes. So especially for this one, we're just barely mixing things together. So really quick, I'm gonna go around the bowl and just mix my dries together and then we'll get into the wet ingredients. It's as easy as that. 
here come the dishes. If you've watched any of my episodes, you know I end up with a lot of dishes at the end. Normally, I wouldn't have everything portioned out into bowls. I do that so I can show you guys the ingredients, but I do tend to have a lot of dishes. So the wet ingredients, also pretty straightforward for a bread. The difference here is that we're going to be adding in some fruit. That's what makes this uh, kind of a special and a holiday type of recipe. So I have a large mixing bowl. I'm going to mix everything that you see in front of me here. I have a half a cup of orange juice. I'm actually going to leave a little in the jug. So I'm going to use that for my icing later. So that's fresh squeezed orange juice. If you want to do store-bought, that's totally fine too. Half a cup of that. I've got two teaspoons, kind of generous teaspoons, of freshly grated orange rind. I did that with a microplaner. If you don't have a microplaner, um, if you have one of those cheese grating blocks, they have a really kind of a, a small hole on one of the sides of the block. That works as a microplaner, so you can use that to grate um, fresh citrus zest. I do a lot of citrus zesting, so for me, uh, it's worth it to have a nice microplaner in the drawer, uh, but you can use that cheese block. If you don't have one, they're a couple bucks at the grocery store. I think they're worth it uh, to have one laying around. So I've got two teaspoons of that uh, freshly grated orange rind. Um, this is a kind of a, a fun ingredient to use in baked goods. This is actually uh, two cups of, I'm sorry, this is six ounces, six ounces of um, Greek yogurt, full fat Greek yogurt. It works in place of other types of dairy. You could do buttermilk instead if you wanted to. Probably even whole milk would work. Um, that's just great for moisture. So that's six ounces of whole fat Greek yogurt. We have a quarter cup of melted butter and a quarter cup is half a stick. This is probably like the least amount of butter I think I've used since I started the show. So this is a health food recipe. Probably not, but I can say that. And then eggs. And as I've explained to you all before, I do like to crack my eggs outside of the bowl when I get started. I explained in my first episode if you've ever had a bad egg experience. It's not fun, and if you crack a bad egg into your mix, you've ruined your whole mix. So I like to just leave them on the outside. I'm gonna give them a quick whisk just to break them up. We'll put them in the middle there. I'm gonna whisk this together quickly just to kind of get it one consistency. And you can already smell the orange. It's so nice. Okay, one consistency, one color. And do remember, again, you're going to want to make sure that everything is at the same temperature. So um, I've had my eggs out on the counter in that bowl for probably about three hours and the eggs are perfectly fine out for a few hours, I promise you. Sometimes people get a little bit uncomfortable thinking about uh, leaving their eggs out, but like I've said before, eggs are, um, you know, they're laid outside and they're okay. So if you leave them out of the fridge for a few hours just to get them to room temp for your bakes, that'll be okay too. The yogurt was probably a little bit on the cold side, um, but I did take everything out probably about an hour before I was going to bake with it. So it just prevents things from clumping up and, and uh, kind of affecting your overall texture of your bake because things will separate if they're not the right temperature. So if you have the time and if you can think of it ahead, uh, go ahead and take everything out of the fridge early. All right, so we've got everything mixed in. So before I start adding my extra fruit and before I show you how to break down that pomegranate, which I'm like too excited. I'm like too excited to show you how to break down a pomegranate, but I, I've been thinking about it all week. Like I can't wait to show you how to do this. Um, but anyway, so before I start adding the fruit, I'm at least going to give these two um, mixtures uh, combined in the bowl here. So let me go ahead and do that. All right, so I mix this for maybe a minute um, just so I stopped seeing the loose flour kind of on the edges of the bowl. So it's just been barely mixed and that's exactly how I want it. Now I'm going to do the really exciting part and I'm going to break down these pomegranates. So these are California pomegranates. Um, you'll see these in your grocery store this time of year. 
You only need a few very simple um, pieces of equipment really to get you started. I'm gonna do two pomegranates. Each pomegranate will hold about, um, probably about a cup of seeds depending on the size. Um, and they do come in different sizes, but they're generally about kind of softball size. Um, so each pomegranate will have about a cup of seeds. Um, they're also called arils, A-R-I-L-S. So if you ever see that reference, that's what they're talking about. Get a nice sturdy cutting board, a sharp knife. You'll need a bowl for the seeds to fall into, and then a nice heavy duty wooden spoon. Um, and you'll see why in a second. So the first thing I'm gonna do, let me get this out of the way for a second here. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my knife and gently cut through about the first quarter inch or so of the pomegranate skin. You don't wanna cut all the way through the fruit. Um, don't go too far, it's got about, it's probably about a quarter inch of skin and that's really all you wanna pierce. So I'm gonna cut it all the way around and then I'm going to pry it up and open with my fingers and then I'll show you what to do next. So very sharp knife. As, as you can see, I'm just barely going through the skin. If you cut through it, you're gonna cut into all those beautiful seeds and that's not what you wanna do. Okay, so I've gone through that first quarter inch and I'm just gonna use my fingers and I'm just gonna pry it open. Just like that. And that is exactly what the inside of a beautiful, healthy, ripe, perfect pomegranate will look like. Um, if you're not accustomed to buying pomegranates, they might be a little bit intimidating on how to choose the fruit. And obviously I can't give you the best idea um, on screen, but you, it wants, you want it to feel very heavy in your hand because all of these arils contain a lot of juice. If it doesn't feel heavy, there probably isn't a lot going on in there. They probably weigh about a pound, I would say. So they're relatively heavy in your hand and you want the skin to be brightly colored, um, no rotting. I mean, they've got kind of dents and dings on them, but that's pretty common. So you don't have to worry about that too much. But just make sure the flesh isn't broken. Um, and this is what the inside should look like. So now I'm gonna show you the fun part. If you're feeling stressed out, you've had a hard day at work or the kids are driving you crazy or really whatever it is. Breaking down pomegranates is a great way to get rid of some frustration because we're gonna do a little smashing. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm just breaking up kind of this flesh pulp, I don't know what you call it, but the connective stuff on the inside of the fruit, I'm kind of breaking that up. And all I do is with my spoon, I'm gonna smack the fruit um, for probably about 30 seconds and you'll see the seeds just falling out of the fruit. So let me get that going. I use both the spine and the flat side. So here we go. So I'm using the spine and the flat part. I'm kind of rotating the fruit in my hand as I go. And they're just falling right out. I mean, it does not get easier. It's easier to break down a pomegranate than it is to like cut up a pineapple or peel an apple. This probably tastes less, takes less time than peeling an apple. And that's it, that's all it took. If you do an internet search of how to break down a pomegranate, you're gonna run into like, cut it into quarters and soak it in water and wait for the seeds to float and blah, blah, blah. And you, you just don't have to do it. All you gotta do, pry it open and smack it with a spoon for 30 seconds and you're done. So let me do the other side. Isn't that fun? I discovered this technique probably two years ago and I've been like singing the gospel of pomegranates ever since. It just makes me so happy. And there's so much juice and they're so healthy for you and they're beautiful and they're perfect for holiday time because I mean, look at them, they glitter like jewels. They're just beautiful. You can't get any more, I think, if you celebrate Christmas, you can't get much more Christmassy looking than that. And that's it. That's how easy it is to break down a pomegranate. Isn't that fascinating? I hope you think it is, because I really do. As you can tell, I'm super excited about it. That's it. That's all you need to do to break down your pomegranate. Now you can use it 
in your baked goods. They hold up really well in baked goods. They're great as a garnish. If you like to do yogurt or oatmeal in the morning, amazing to sprinkle on top of that. A lot of people um, will put them in salads, kind of like if you have like a goat cheese, an apple, walnut salad, you can, I'm getting hungry, sprinkle these on top. Um, they're a very versatile fruit. If you've never tasted one, they're hard to describe because they really kind of have their own flavor, but they sort of have like a cranberry tartness and like a strawberry sweetness. They're, they're kind of berry-like in their flavor, but um, they're excellent. Please go out and buy a pomegranate and smash it until all the seeds fall out and then eat them. You will enjoy it, I promise. So this is really all I need. Uh, I'm not going to do the second one because now you've seen me do it once. Um, we're going to do a cup of pomegranate seeds right into the mix. And then I'm going to add a half a cup of cranberries. And you can either use uh, fresh or dried, whatever you prefer. I've done it both ways. Um, I think it tastes relatively the same. Dried cranberries usually have a little bit of added sugar. So if you'd rather avoid that, you can do it that way um, by just adding in your fresh cranberries, but about a half a cup. So let me uh, wash my hand because as you can tell, I'm covered in pomegranate juice and then we'll do the rest. All right, so you just watched me break down a pomegranate and I'm gonna do a cup. And I said each pomegranate has about a cup of seeds Obviously that's give or take, but um, it's pretty darn close. I'm just, I'm just gonna throw them all in, but I'm gonna reserve some of this juice because I don't want to add too much extra moisture to the bake. So I'm gonna leave that out. I could add that into my icing with my orange. Hmm, that's a good idea. So about a cup of pomegranates and a half a cup. I'm gonna do the dried cranberries today, but you can do fresh as well. I'm going to dump those right in. There we go. And not too much mixing again. So just a couple times around the bowl. I don't want to beat up the fruit too much. That's good enough for me. Okay, so like most breads, we're going to start with a bread tin here. This is a eight inch, which is a pretty standard size for bread tins. I would stick to that size if you can. If you have smaller or larger, you're going to affect the uh, baking time a little bit. So, and this is a relatively long bake. It's an hour at least, sometimes about five minutes more. So I'd stick with that eight inch pan. I've already greased it. I like to grease my tins with butter. Sometimes um, I'll save those butter wrappers with the leftover butter on it and I'll just use that to grease it. You want to do the bottom and the sides because this is um, with the fruit it can tend to stick a little bit because of that sugar content. So you do want to grease it pretty thoroughly. If you have the cooking spray you can go ahead and use that too. I tend to not use that if I can avoid it just because it's not a super natural product and that's sort of the way I like to bake and cook but if that's what you have that'll be perfectly fine too. So here's what the inside of my bowl looks like. It's a very simple batter. It's quite thick. It's not going to be runny like a lot of cake batters can sometimes be. Um, it is quite thick. I'm not gonna, like I said, beat that fruit up too much because all that color will leach through into the, the loaf, which is not the end of the world. But if you wanna keep everything kind of clean, you barely have to integrate the fruit in with everything else. That is all she wrote. This is, this has to be the easiest bake I've done for you all. So we're about three quarters of the way up. Now remember, it kind of looks like it's missing something, but we put all that leavening agent in there. We have baking powder and baking soda and quite a bit of it too. So this will rise quite a bit up over the bowl by the time we're done. I'm gonna pop this into a 350 degree oven right in the center of the oven and let this bake off. I'm gonna check it at 55 minutes, but it'll probably take that full hour, sometimes even five minutes more. When I put a skewer into the middle of the bread, once it bakes up and it comes out nice and clean with no kind of gooey residue on it, that's when I know it's done. And then we're going to make our delicious orange and maybe pomegranate icing. I mean, we'll see, we might get a little creative on the show here today. Uh, drizzle that on top and turn it into a beautiful holiday centerpiece.
So my cake is in the oven and it's baking at 350 degrees for about an hour. And now I'm going to make a very, very simple icing to drizzle over the top of that bread. Uh, and icing is super simple. I'm just gonna start with, it's a half cup of powdered sugar or confectioner's sugar, whatever you wanna call it. And then I've got about a tablespoon of that freshly squeezed orange juice again. That's, that's all it takes to make icing. If you don't want the orange flavor, you can do just a little bit of milk or heavy cream. And I'm gonna thin this out with some pomegranate juice, which I'm very excited about, by the way. That was probably a teaspoon. Icing's easy because you can adjust it. So if I end up with too liquidy of a, liquidy, is that a word? I don't know. Um, if you end up with too liquidy of an icing, you can just add a little bit more powdered sugar until you get the consistency just right. I want this to be kind of a drizzling consistency because that's exactly what I'm going to do. And that's perfect. It's a nice pink color. If you don't like pink, don't add pomegranate juice. Ah, I think it's pretty. And if I was hosting a holiday party, there'd be some pink stuff there. You can bet on it. Okay, that looks good to me. Let's just take a take a taste. Mmm. Mm-hmm. That's good. That was a good call. So all we have to do now is wait for an hour. So at long last, the bread is ready and it's out of the oven. Uh, and I've allowed it to cool for a few hours. Now, if you have warmed baked goods and you try to ice them right away, you're gonna end up with a big runny mess because the heat is gonna work on that sugar and it's just gonna deflate into nothing. We don't want that. So I've allowed this to cool for a few hours. Um, you can tip this out and cool it on a cooling rack if you have one. If not, I find if you leave it in the tin, it's, it's okay. But if you take it out, then you don't run the risk of it getting a little bit too browned on the insides when it still has contact with that pan. Sometimes that can happen. Let me get my towel here. So as you can see, I think it looks beautiful. It's the perfect color. It's a nice golden brown. As you can tell, as it baked, it kind of split open at the top, which you want to see that. You can see all those beautiful pieces of fruit running all the way through. It's a rather dense uh, bread. It probably weighs a few pounds. And it smells amazing. And I wish you could just come into the kitchen and have a piece of bread with me. But I guess you're just going to have to make it yourself. So I'm just going to do a quick little drizzle of this beautiful icing. You can use a whisk or a fork. If you're brave, you can use the bowl and just go right over the top. I kind of like to load up the whisk with the frosting, the icing. Kind of do a drizzle until you run out. Go back in and do it again. I'm going to do it until the icing has gone. This does not have to be iced at all. You can just do it plain. Sprinkle a little powdered sugar over the top, kind of sift it over the top to give it that beautiful kind of snow effect. If you wanted to just do icing with no fruit in it, it's totally up to you. I think the pink's kind of fun, but that's just me. I'm a romantic like that. And it's got those beautiful fruit flavors infused in with the icing. I mean, there's no food coloring here. I just don't like food coloring and I try to avoid it at all costs. And so we just learned if you want pink icing for anything, kids, birthday, party, cake, cupcakes, whatever, if you need something pink, use a little pomegranate juice and it's perfect. Now we could leave it just like this if we wanted to. I'm gonna kind of ramp it up a little bit, be a little extra. I have fresh rosemary sprigs. They're very holiday-esque. Rosemary's in a lot of holiday uh, cooking recipes. Your turkey will probably have rosemary if you choose to have turkey. Um, your stuffing will probably have rosemary in it. You can even do rosemary in cocktails. It's all over the place around this time of year. And I have it on my nice holiday platter too. This is my poinsettia platter. Um, insider tip, I use this all year because I think it's pretty, but technically I think it's supposed to be just for the holidays. All right, so I have my rosemary and then I'm going to garnish with a little bit of fresh cranberry just to make it look extra, extra pretty. 
if I would have thought ahead of time, and I really should have, I would have sugared these. I don't know where that went. Uh, if you watched my first episode, I did cupcakes with sugared blueberries, and I actually made those blueberries based on these holiday cranberries that I do every year, sugared cranberries. It's ever so simple. It doesn't get easier. You just um, soak your cranberries in a sugar syrup, um, which is just water and sugar. And then once you kind of drain the excess sugar off, you would roll them in super fine sugar, which is also known as baking sugar, and you let them dry and then they sparkle like jewels and they're beautiful. And if I would have had the time or if I would have thought ahead, I would have done that. And you can pop them in your mouth and eat them. They're just like candy. And there you have it. This is, quite frankly, there it is. One of the easiest holiday breads I think you could ever make. It's a celebration of winter fruit, which I think is important. Sometimes, you know, we forget that there are so many amazing seasonal uh, produce items that we can uh, take advantage of only in the winter months. Pomegranate being my personal favorite. Um, there's orange in there. There's dried cranberries. We have fresh cranberries here and a beautiful pomegranate and orange infused icing on the top. All we had to do is plate it up and take about 30 seconds to uh, decorate it. You could serve that on any holiday table and I think people would be really impressed. I hope you take the time to make this recipe. If you have any questions, I'm very easy to get a hold of. I'm online, I'm on Instagram and Facebook at Molly's Flower Shop. My website is mollysflowershop.com. You can send me an email, mollysflowershop at gmail.com. And you can always catch me on JATV channel 994. I hope you've enjoyed this recipe. Ask me any questions you might have. I look forward to seeing you next month. We're going to be having a very special January episode. I can't wait to see you back for that. Please enjoy this and have a great holiday season. And remember, life's short. Eat the cookie.